Yay, welcome to the Red Bra Project. We are here at episode 23 already. Happy New Year to everybody. I know, can you believe it, Shauna? I see you, you're like. 23, it's crazy to think that we're almost a year into this as well. It's just uh, so good. Happy New Year, like you said. Yeah, I love all of your um, pictures in the background there. It looks like your place is getting a little facelift. I feel like I'm holding it too, my <laughs> Very cool. Are you um, yeah, not your normal backdrop. My nor what is my normal backdrop? I don't know. Maybe you don't have normal. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm in. Um, we just got back to Chattanooga, Tennessee. So I'm um, I'm dressed for the winter vortex that's taking over the country. Except if you live in Texas, our guest tonight, Jocelyn, is based out of Texas. So I'm sure it's chilly there, but the rest of the country I know is bearing down in like sub degree temperatures. So yes, yeah, our 30 degrees I think is quite warm to some people. <laughs> it's amazing. That's chilly to you for sure. <laughs> yeah. And with that, we are so excited to welcome Jocelyn Pohar Fletcher to the Red Bra Project tonight, episode 23. She is a beautiful mama of two, is based out of the West, like we said, and is going to be sharing some of her personal stories with us tonight just about um, inspiring other women through some of the things she's been through and kind of what her favorite things to do are to lift us up and what her personal journey is. So we're so excited to have you here with us. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So Sean, I know I just kind of threw you the mic really quick and I said, hey, happy new year. So. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm so excited to have you here tonight, Jocelyn. I remember when I first saw your Instagram page, I just thought it was, you know, really uplifting, really positive and, um, you know, so much that resonated with the Red Bra Project. So if you could tell us a little bit about you and kind of what brought you to the social media platform, what you're doing there. Sure. Yeah. Um, I really, that, that really does make my day, you know, when someone pops over and says that something was motivating or inspiring, that's why I do what I do. Um, I feel like I was born to try to help people. That's just a passion of mine. I just, I, it, it gives me like this beautiful natural high just to know that I could help inspire somebody even in the smallest way. Um, so as we talked about, I am a wife. I'm a mom of two little girls. Um, the last couple of years has been a little whirlwind for us. Um, we moved down to Texas from Illinois. Um, so all of our families up north, um, my husband travels a lot for work. So it's me and my little ladies who are two years old, um, low is two and then gray is nine months. Um, so it's it, like, like I said, it's crazy town over here. <laughs> it's always very busy. Um, and I'm also a pediatric speech and feeding therapist. Um, so I, I just, I feel like I, I am blessed to be able to have that profession where I can help all the little itty bitties. Um, but as we moved down here to Texas, I, you know, I lost that huge support system of family and friends that I had really close to me um, up in Illinois. So I ended up finding um, this group of ladies that I just really connected with that helped to bring me joy and motivation and positivity. Um, more self-love and just trying to figure out how to get through anxiety and depression, separating from family and friends. Um, and I'm so grateful that I found these ladies and they inspire me and they inspired me to inspire others. So much of your story resonates with me um, as an Ohioan who moved to New England um, with no family and raising two kids. I get it um, so much. It really is your tribe, your village that, that helps get you through it. And so um, it's, it's so motivating to hear that. So are you still doing the speech therapy work? Because also one of my children on the autism spectrum. So thank you for the work that you do. Um, but it's, how do you balance all of that with um, two kids under two? <laughs> So, well, we wear lots of hats in this house. Yep. <laughs> um, I actually was able to cut down to part-time um, as a pediatric speech and feeding therapist. Um, while my girls are little, I want to be able to spend as much time at home with them as I can. Um, but I also love being a speech therapist. So I like being able to do a little bit of both. Um, it's also kind of nice for my you know, sanity to get out of the house. <laughs> For a day to you know interact with other adults 
Um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so I'm in a pediatric clinic. Stand by. <clears throat> it looks like we're frozen on one side, but I'm not sure. Yeah. So this group is very focused on wellness and health. And that is something that growing up, I was always very active. Um, I played softball, travel softball. Um, I was a cheerleader in college. Um, so I always enjoyed those like team sports um, with that support system that would just always rally around you. And I, what I found that was different about this team of women that focuses on health and wellness, I know there's lots of, lots of different groups of people out there that do that, but something that is so important to us is the mental wellness and emotional wellness that comes with it. Because I truly believe that you cannot be physically well if you're not mentally well. I, mind play is a huge part in how your body can heal and feel physically. Um, so this was such a drastic and dramatic, wonderful change for me. Um, I like, I'm, I'm a very anxiety driven person and, um, I struggle with that daily and I still do, but finding, you know, a positive support system around me that really helps me stay focused on keeping my body well has been really helpful. So Jocelyn, I'm gonna jump in really quick because I don't know ladies if you noticed, but we froze for a second um, and it's my internet side. So welcome to one and done. I was just telling Jocelyn for all of our viewers that we um, typically used to use a different platform because of technical problems. We went to Zoom and sometimes they happen, but we like to keep it as real and authentic as possible. So sometimes we have these hiccups. So I don't wanna miss anything that you said. Um, but I did hear, we picked right back up on your mental wellness. It's so important um, what's yes. going on on the inside. And that's one of the things that attracted you to this group of people. And that helped you through some of your own personal um, challenges and getting through depression and anxiety, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, and before we went there, I wanted to ask, was this is anxiety and depression something you've always dealt with? Or was it you know, with a move and change of, gosh, East Coast, well, Midwest to the West and, you know, new job and all, everything like that. So tell us a little bit about the onset and just how you finally admitted, yeah, okay, what I'm feeling probably isn't normal, but I need to do something to address it. Right. So a few, well, I've always been a, a planner, an organizer, someone that liked to have everything in line. And I think I was able to kind of manage anxiety when I knew what was coming. Mm -hmm. um, and then after I graduated from grad school, I actually became somewhat ill. Um, I had a slew of different, just uncomfortable symptoms. And after a few years of tests and rheumatologists and um, endocrinologists, um, I was told that I had fibromyalgia. Mm -hmm. And fibromyalgia, one of the symptoms could be or a couple of the symptoms could be anxiety and depression, um, along with um, some weight management issues, um, headaches, inability to sleep, joint pain, um, widespread pain, hair loss. And I think that when all of that really hit me, that's when my anxiety and depression really kind of hit the, the bottom most part. Um, and, and then, yes, and then we ended up moving and, you know, all of those extra just life things that cause stress. Um, it so always happens I think at I've, once, you know, it's like yeah. one major thing and then all of this other stuff. And you're like, no wonder why I feel like this when you actually take a step back and you think about it. Yes. Yeah, it does. When it rains, it pours. <laughs> so yeah. kind of a long lines moving and taking on all of that how do you push through fear how do you i mean i know you said you have this tribe of women that's motivating you but when they're not there how are you making sure that you are mentally well yeah so in the past year i have really tried to explore and dive into some personal development 
um, whether it be podcasts or audiobooks, reading a hard book. Um, a few years back, like I thought that was all fooey. <laughs> and, you know, I never really saw the value in it. But this past year, I've had a lot of extra little trials that we have gone through. And I, I, it, really, it really does help um, when your mind is in the right place. And I found that when I'm listening to something that's uplifting and pick, I, you know, choosing a book that maybe targets, um, I'm a people pleaser. And um, I always, I, it, make, it doesn't make me feel good when I know that someone doesn't like me. <laughs> So, and yeah, and it's, it's a hard thing to get over because, you know, no, no, no one's gonna, not everyone is going to like us. That's just how it is. You know, everybody's built differently and, um, and making sure that that doesn't, um, affect my wellness is something, you know, that I've kind of dove, dove into. Yeah, dove absolutely. In. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Head first. Yeah. yeah you know, I, I went head first. <laughs> first wrong, so. <laughs> and I found that, um, that it's been really, really beneficial. I love Rachel Hollis. Um, I, I think I saw that you guys did a little post about her not too long ago. Yeah. Um, but I, know, um, I saw I the, the Rise podcast is one of your favorites as well. And there's just something humanizing about the way that she does her podcast. Like you said, she is uplifting, but she's also really honest. And I think it makes us feel um, like we're, we're okay. Right. Like what we're feeling, yes. um, is normal. Yep. I love that real raw. Um, like you said, just lets us know that we're not alone and everybody has struggles. Um, yeah. And honestly, and isn't that the truth? I mean, there's so like we go as women just in general and we're juggling things and doing stuff. We're like, wow, how does she have it all together? How does she do it? But at the end of the day, you know, everybody has struggles and it's just a matter of, you know, just, how, how you go about thinking and dealing with them sometimes and what helps you to get through it. Right. I, and I think that's, what's beautiful about your social media is that it, it's honest, you know, it, you are fully admitting that sometimes life can be messy um, and that you're anxious, <laughs> but um, that, that life is, is still worth living and there's so much purpose and, and here's the reason to get up every day. And so I think that, you know, what you're doing is, is really resonating at least with us. And I'm sure so many other people. Thank you. Oh, thanks. So many, I mean, I love seeing, and the cutest thing is when your little girls are in your videos and for all of our <laughs> new followers and watchers and watchers. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> um, viewers, when we, when I go through your page, I will stop and then you'll see like a little head pop up or, you know, you're doing your thing and you're exercising and you're inspiring all of us. Like whatever you're doing throughout your busy day, you can fit it in. Look at my two kids who are under two right here too. And I mean, it's just, it's really cool to watch you live life um, just as it is. So. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really, I found that a routine is not only helpful for adults, but it's so helpful for kiddos too. And so many people tell me that, oh my gosh, I can't do what you do. I could never, my kids would never sit and work out with me. And it wasn't easy at the beginning. Like my, my little kiddos are just like every other child on this planet. You know, they ping pong around the room and they need things and they cry and they get upset. But I built a routine that they just know that, you know, we actually, we work out in the garage and they know that when we go in there, that they get to play with their certain toys that are in there and mommy's going to do some move in and they can do it with me and we have fun. Um, so I really am hoping to, in, to let them know and to instill the idea that it is fun and enjoyable to take care of ourselves. It's not, it's not effort. We don't have to do it. We get to do it. Um, and it's a good part of our day. Yeah. Uh, um, I know you've talked about this trend with women, but is there a woman in particular or maybe two or that, you know, have really inspired you or, or um, been that motivator in your life that, that kind of got you where you are now? Yeah. So I would say one of the women that I look up to the most is my grandmother. Um, my grandmother raised three girls on her own um, with no help at all. Um, mentally, emotionally, financially, nothing. 
and she was always like a, just like a second mom to me. My mom, um, my mom is, is amazing, and my mom was a working mom too, but always made sure that she was at everything you know for us. But my grandma was always there with her, um, and she was the person that I would turn to if I needed help writing an essay, or um, you know we'd watch Grey's Anatomy on our Thursday nights together. Um, we loved our Nicholas Sparks books, and there's just so many things that the two of us have a passion for. Um, and I'm so grateful for her. And even now that we're down here in Texas, it breaks my heart that my little girls aren't growing up with her right next to them. But um, thank goodness for FaceTime. We still get to see her every day, so. Oh, it really closes those miles, technology. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, well, your grandma sounds amazing. She's a good one. <laughs> I can just picture your little book club together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we ask every guest this, um, we consider the red bra like our super cake that um, you can't really see it was there and it's giving us that, that power to, to feel empowered to do, um, you know, incredible things. Do you think that you've had one or two months to share with us that is your red bra moment? So, and sorry, you were cutting out just a little bit. So, uh, so can you just say it one more time absolutely so the red bra is like your superhero cape and it is that it's not always seen but it's the ability to empower you to do these great things and feel strong and have that that confidence and, and know your self-worth is there so, a moment that you feel like you had that red bra moment so i feel like every time that i share something about mental wellness I get so nervous and so anxious. Um, I break out in hives um, just from that physical, you know, just I'm, I'm freaking out inside. But the moment that I share, and the first time that I did share that this was a struggle of mine, the amount of support and flood of women that came to me saying just thank you for sharing, not even that, you know, it, it was just that, they heard that they weren't alone and that they didn't have to struggle by themselves. Um, I feel like with, with so many of the hard things in my life, the things that I'm embarrassed about or I've kept inside, um, that there's so many people out there that have similar struggles who are feeling the exact same way. And it's those moments when I'm not sure if I'm ready you know, to share a situation like that but I, I just kind of push through and do. Um, I found that, that that is something that has made me feel, not only feel more relief and f a freeing feeling from that stress and anxiety that I had, but it was such an amazing feeling to know that I, that I helped someone in some little way. That's awesome. Well, we're grateful for your vulnerability and you sharing um, because I think it does really inspire people to feel safe to do it themselves too. Yeah, absolutely. And just kind of to think back on our, our conversation and, you know, this is just a snippet into your life and there's been a lot of work behind the scenes and there always is whenever you're dealing with something like anxiety and depression and, you know, a couple of our guests have spoken up on mental illness and just the stigma behind it. And I love that. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, just listening and kind of hearing you speak, talking about routine and positive podcasts what is, you know, those are two things that it sounds like have helped you. Is there a third thing or is there something else for somebody who could be struggling out there and they're like, I'm just, I just need to try something. So for anxiety, those things were definitely super, super anxiety and depression. Mm -hmm. um, I would definitely say act, being active, moving is so important for me. Um, some people think that, that I'm crazy for, you know, going and doing some sort of movement every single day. But, you know, I, do, I mean, I do like 10 to 30 minutes of movement in the morning, whether it be yoga or stretching, maybe a little cardio, maybe some weight, something. Um, but the days that I don't get a little bit of movement in, my mental wellness and my mind is just, it, it, it's not at a good level. 
that's where I find that I have more of my hard days, more of my flare ups with, you know, autoimmune disorder and um, fibromyalgia. So I really encourage people just to move, go for a walk, with, you know, go for a walk with your kids, go play at the park, um, stretch, you know, anything just to get your body going. Um, I feel like is so helpful along with, you know, keeping that balance with, um, you know, filling your body with all the good stuff, you know, have your treats when you want them, but make sure you fill your body with the good stuff too. Cause that's helped a lot with me. Yeah. Love, love, love that. Um, I know you had a post about nourishing yourself and filling your cup first. Um, and you know, that statement's so true. It's so funny that you mentioned, the uh, just moving helps with your mental, um, just your thoughts and things. Just today I was talking about exercising and I'm like, huh. The only reason why I do it is because it keeps this straight. <laughs> so, so I mean, if you start your day like that and it's crazy, but you know, it's just, it's just been routine and it's part of my life. And yeah, everybody likes when their jeans fit better, but you know, it really helps with that mental coffee too. So I call it my mental coffee. So yeah, yes, totally. Get it. It's so much more than the physical, honestly, activity and movement. Like I said, I, I feel like you really, you cannot be physically well without being mental, mentally well. And I feel like physical activity helps to get me mentally well. So it's like just a full circle. <laughs> oh yeah. It's a great marriage right there. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, thank you so, so much for joining us tonight. We are so excited to welcome you to the Red Bra Project and share your story with others. Um, I know that you have already touched so many lives and just by being you and going out there and making a difference and sharing your story. And that's what it's all about. So from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you. We are so, so, well, thank you so much. honored to have you. So, Yes, you have been a fantastic guest. I'm so glad that we finally got to meet you, even though virtually. Um, we're going to have a huge guest reunion one day, and it's going to be amazing. Um, but, you know, we love to end every show um, with a quote, and just reading through everything that you have, I thought this was kind of perfect, and it's an author that you like as well. Um, you are loved massively, ferociously, unconditionally. And it's by Jen Sincero, who wrote um, You Are a Badass, which I saw was one of your favorite books yes. as well. Um, and she is not fooey, I think, or whatever you said it was before. <laughs> she is the real deal. Yes. <laughs> She's great. Um, but can you please tell our guests where they can find you? We will make sure that we link all of your stuff up too, but if there's any specific spots that um, you want to guide them to. Sure. So I have Instagram. Um, and it is my first maiden and last name, Jocelyn, J-O-S-C-E-L-Y-N, Pohar, P-O-H-A-R, Fletcher, F-L-E-T-C-H-E-R. And I am also over on Facebook and I have a page called The Anxious Mama <laughs> because that's me. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Well, thank you so much. We are so grateful to have you um, as our first guest of the new year. What a great way to kick off the start of um, 2019. I know that um, all of our viewers are going to be so inspired by you. We hope that they go over and check out both of your pages. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, and we, we look forward to, to following your journey um, on both of those platforms and wherever else it takes you. For all our viewers tonight who have not done so already, please um, subscribe to our page and um, remember to click the bell so that you get the notifications. Um, from Renee and I tonight, we thank you and we hope you have a great night. Thanks everybody. Bye.